Hey everybody, it's Sophia Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. However, now we're going to talk about Episode 2 of Better Call Saul, Season 5, and the title is called 50% Off. Interesting, huh? Like I said before, what's up with Kim? During a quick trip to see a possible new house for them, she and Saul, or Jimmy, whatever, together, the viewers are treated to flashes of the old Kim, the one who has fun with and loves Jimmy, but mostly during the show, the new Kim, or the I want to be just like Chuck Kim, overshadowed her entire persona for the most part. No matter, it was still disconcerting. She seems to be pulling back slowly, but uh, often from Jimmy. On to Gus. Well, he became darker, like Darth Vader. <laughs> there really doesn't seem to be a difference between the two. He's he's really evil. I mean, they're they're really going all the way with making Gus evil. Yeah. Like he he he's been sort of like in the middle, first three seasons. He's really evil now. He is, and guess what? That Salamanca snitch. He's not fooled at all by Gus's quote cleverly concocted lies about his building project. He is very suspicious. Nacho is really between a rock and a hard place. He has nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. He is not long for this life, I believe. Hopefully his father will live to a ripe old age. Jimmy, oops, I mean Saul, is in a full transformation. Let's, of just, let's just call him Jimmy. I don't, I don't even like the name Saul anymore. I don't either, but there was a famous author of that name. Uh, he's the gregarious, manipulative Goodman character and has, I think, 48 clients, I believe. Kim continues to act like Chuck Point Two, and Mike, oh, woe is me. <laughs> Mike is taking his evil deed to heart, Bring, binging on alcohol and even being mean to his granddaughter. Now that is sad. <laughs> in episode two, all the characters have moved in, and the story continues. I liked it a lot. Between Nacho's struggle for survival, Mike's regrets, Gus showing that he and Darth Vader are really brothers cut from the same cloth, and Jimmy's full-fledged in his element Saul Goodman. I found episode two to be very entertaining. Since I have only been watching reseller YouTube videos and some politics lately, if I can stomach it, episode two was really good. I give it an A. Marco? Well, I thought it was a really good episode. It was it was dark, it was uh, funny, it was everything that Better Call Saul should be. Right. And it had a lot of great moments, a lot of great storytelling. It was really a good episode, surprisingly good actually. And and in particular, if I have to think about, uh, I wanted to mention there was sort of a plot hole with episode one. They were sort of arguing on and on about the 50% off. Basically, there were people who didn't get cell phones at the end of his promotion in episode one. And he gave them 50% off of legal consultation for nonviolent crimes for the next week or two. And they were saying that that's going to make people go commit crime. To me, I think that that's stupid. Because yes. I, I don't think anyone in their right mind would go commit a crime just to waste money, period. I mean, you're still wasting money that you could have to yourself uh, on hiring a lawyer. It doesn't matter if you get 50% off or, or not. 
the the thing is though I but then I thought about maybe there are a couple of criminals who could be that dumb. Well, if you're a drug addict and your drug habit is taking this full circle every single day because you've got a habit and you've got to feed it, that's one thing. And the 50% off, well, I guess that'll come into to play. I don't know. But just like going to rob a place or something just to get 50% off, Marco. Yeah, I don't, I don't and want And I that. thought that was stupid. I, th- I, do, I do I think that's something stupid. <laughs> Wink, wink. And so, yeah, I, I liked how they... I, I Actually, when they went through the house, it reminded me a lot of the episode in uh, season one where they look at the, that office building right. and then at the end of the episode, Jimmy, you know, he, he's not going to get that office because it was probably really expensive, too. And no, I thought they had it for a while, but it was very brief. No, that, that no, that you're thinking of in seasons oh, yeah. two and three. I'm talking about season one. That tall where, one in the building, the tall. It was building. inside a building on the the a, a, a tall floor. Right. And it right. and they went in there and he, it was in downtown and everything. I forgot about that one. No, you didn't. That's what we were talking about. That you just forgot that that was an episode. But okay. With Gus, he's he's really evil, oh. and and he's still uh because what's funny is in season three, you thought that Gus was the hero, and that uh another no Hector. pun intended, and and you thought Hector was the evil guy who's gonna kill Nacho's father, therefore you need to get him out of the way, but then what's happening now? Gus is even more evil than Hector. And we can clearly see that in this episode. He's just pure evil. And and it's making me happy that, that Heisenberg kills him in Breaking Bad. Because he really deserves it. And well, so... I was thinking about in Breaking Bad. Remember how the police gave him some kind of award? Community award for yeah. his donations to some kind of philanthropic project. Maybe helping people. And here he is that doing that on one face, on the face of things, but underneath he's being really bad. I kind of would like to see him get an award too, because I really think that a lot of Breaking Bad fans aren't giving Better Call Saul a chance because they think it's goofy. They didn't like the first season. What they should do is watch the first three seasons, skip season four, watch a season four recap, <coughs> and then. Let's get on season five because you're you're gonna like it. It's a good episode. I give this episode a B plus. And now on to spoilers. There's a scene where Jimmy admits that he that he did the fifty percent off thing and she has a, a hissy fit at him. Of course she's because she's Chuck. Well, she gives him the cold stare. Yeah, she didn't really that's say what much. She always does all the time. Whenever he's and it's. it's it's really gross, and and, and because because you can tell it's just it's this evilness under the surface of her, and it's like she can't even uh, bring it out to him. She has to hide it from him because because she's so sinister, and, and she doesn't even tell him what she did. I mean, she ended up doing the thing that she said she wasn't gonna do with her clients. With her clients, and she doesn't even tell him. It's like oh. Let's rag on him for doing something wrong, and then let's not even admit that I did something wrong, too. It's like, what the F? And then, what What else? Uh, 50% off. Oh, Nacho. He, he gets the drugs after the guy gets caught and everything, and he... He risked his life. Cool. He risked getting arrested. He risked a lot. It wasn't enjoyable to me because of the way that they, we were viewing him. Well, I I found it hard to see because yeah. it was dark, and so what happens is, it, it in the very first episode of the season, you see this guy reach into a drain pipe in an alley. He kind of runs into the alley. He reaches his hand into the drain pipe, and he gets out a little baggie of meth. I I guess it has to be, and then he runs away. And I guess that's like a, 
It's like a little deposit box. So you get your process. You get your uh, meth in a little baggie out of that drain pipe. And, and then in this episode, he couldn't get it for because it was stuck. And so then they actually called uh, Crazy Eight to come and to come to the rescue. Mm-hmm. And then Crazy Eight ends up getting arrested right when he gets it out of the drain pipe. It falls out right in front of the cops. Yeah. But that, that, that's the thing. That I, was really good. That was like a Breaking Bad type of humor. I, I, maybe you could explain to me it, it. What happened was he got he was on ladder because he had to go to the top of the drain pipe where the drugs were being pushed down. So you would reach in and get your bag, right? And so yeah. he it, it got stuck. It got clogged, and so uh, that guy who is totally the opposite of a crazy eight title i didn't get that at all he's so cal- very calm and nice and sweet i mean he's not he, he would never even think he does what he does but anyway uh he climbs the top of the ladder and messes with the pipe and here comes the cops and all these people run and he's there on the ladder and they said well, what are you doing and he said well i'm unclogging this drain pipe and right after he said it, all the drugs fell out on the ground. So then he's getting processed and arrested. They tell uh, Nacho, et cetera, what happened. They come drive down there. The and bag, then, and then Nacho uh, goes and gets the drugs. Yeah, but where did he get them? I don't understand. They they fell onto the ground. And so what? where did he? It seemed like he went to the top of the building somehow and grabbed them. I think that there were bags on top of the drain pipe still. Oh, okay. I that's what I didn't understand. I thought they'd all fall into the ground. I would think the cops would have picked and, them up. And so then Pick I'd them also all up. I'd also like to quickly mention uh Mike <laughs> He was with his granddaughter and and, and he's sitting there in, in, in her his uh daughter in law. Is that yeah. what it would be? Yep. His daughter-in-law calls him. Is like, hey, Mike, can you come over and watch Kaylee? Oh, you got to do it right now. Because she has to go to work. <laughs> That's and what she always the... sounds like. She's she's always calling him and asking for demands from him. And well, he is <laughs> was on a he had been on a drinking bench, so he had a hangover, a massive hangover, and he goes, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. And then he, and he comes over and uh, they're going over their multiplication tables while uh, they're building a ladder for a tree house for her. And then all of a sudden she starts asking him questions about her, uh, ab- about her father, and a.k.a. his son. And then he gets upset and he yells at her and everything. And she says, you... Uh, you're not allowed to do the ladder anymore, and she runs and cries to her. <laughs> and won't come out for the rest of the evening. And won't eat dinner, and because <laughs> he's he's like he's really like tortured. Well, he's and, re- and remorsing. And so I I like but... I like that. That's cool. And and Safi was like, Safi was like, oh no. Well, and, it's a good thing that he has a lot of remorse and regret. Yeah. He didn't. He liked the guy. That was part another part of the problem. I don't. I, he, he still. I, it was his. I I would believe it would be against his principles to just kill somebody like that. But it wasn't just that. He liked the guy and respected him, and he understood. Well, I wouldn't even fully understand this. Why he had to be with his wife? He'd never been apart from her. And he just wanted to see her for a little bit, and then she could go her merry way. I I don't know how it was all going to go down, but it wasn't. Some, he wasn't wasn't supposed to be doing that. And then Jimmy, he he's trying to go over cases and uh, settle settle what should happen, what the sentence sentencing should be for each case with this uh, meanie woman. And and she basically just will not do it because well she doesn't like him because she doesn't like him has a personal vendetta against him yeah I've seen that in real life and so then what he does is he has someone make the the 
the elevator uh, get stuck and then he starts being really annoying and and talking to himself so loudly that she can't really focus and so then they sit there and they go over cases together for like lot. 20 minutes and so that was funny because he was able to force her to sort of grow up and uh, talk to him and just do work and they're working yeah, they're not working. playing around yeah and, and, and so, he has 48, I, I'm that sure cool. that's what it was, 48 clients. So they went through quite a few. I mean, you want to talk about, quote, unquote, using your powers for good. That was using his powers for good. That was a very good thing that he yeah. did. It wasn't evil and horrible and is going to have tons of consequences like many of the other things that he did, does. So, yeah, that's what we thought about the episode. Anything else, Safi? No, I don't think so. I just, uh, I, I really liked it, and I'm really happy. That I think the thing is that in Breaking Bad, people really liked Saul. They thought he was really a, a good character. And because now that he really knows who he is and what he's about, or he's about at that point, that uh, he's like the character from Breaking Bad. Baking, breaking bad now, and that's what people liked about him. And so, it will be more enjoyable. But in the process, though, or around him, it's all getting very dark. Yeah, I disagree. I don't want to see him as Saul Goodman. I want to see him as Jimmy. Well, I don't know. I don't know. He even says uh, to another lawyer because he's got to deal with them about uh, cases. Uh, the guy says, oh, okay, uh, Jim, or, you know, he calls him by his real name. And he says, that's not my name anymore. And he, and he says, yes, it is. And, uh, they, you know, they, they're busy. He has to go on. And uh, But you see that uh, he, he's given it up. He wants to give it up. He doesn't want to be him anymore because of the thing with his brother, I believe. All that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's affected him. And. This is the way he's dealing with it, really. You, you can't blame him because there was that one issue where he uh, he tried to get reinstated to be a lawyer in season four, and they wouldn't let him because he didn't mention his brother when he answered their question. And so it's like it's always going to follow him around, the, the fact that his, his big and powerful and amazing brother and and like and that that's always gonna follow him around and so he changed his name and everything and so yeah. Uh that's it for me. It's Yep. So goodbye everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>